I will repeat what I've said in the past. <laughs> it's inconceivable to me that it would be 67 votes to remove the president from office. The allegation now, I think, is bribery. Isn't that the new term we're using? Here's the question. Who did the president bribe, and what did he get for it? Be specific. I think bribery is a made-up political charge without any factual basis. The president of the Ukraine, who represents the government of the Ukraine, says the president never put any pressure on him or ever talked to him about investigating Hunter Biden or Joe Biden in return for military aid. Uh, and they weren't investigated and the money flowed. So nothing's changed from my point of view. The House is going to do what the House is going to do. And when they get through, as you all know, it uh, comes over here, displaces all the business, and we'll be on it until senators decide it's time to, to reach a conclusion. Sunday, the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives called the President of the United States an imposter. Speaker of the House called the President an imposter. The guy 63 million people voted for, the guy who won an Electoral College landslide, the Speaker calls an imposter. That's what's happened to our country, to this Congress. The Speaker's statement says it all. The Democrats have never accepted the will of the American people. Democrats don't trust the American people. The American people who wanted to send someone to this town who was willing to shake it up a bit, they don't trust that. And they have tried to do everything they can to undo what the American people decided on November 8, 2016. They've been out to get the president since the day he was elected. The whistleblower's lawyer, the whistleblower's legal team said this, January 30th, 2017, the president had been in office about a week. Coup has started, first of many steps. Next sentence, impeachment will follow ultimately. I guess we're in the final step. Started, started three and a half years ago. Congressman Tlaib started this Congress First day of Congress said, impeach the president. Representative Green said, if we don't impeach him, the president's going to win re-election. We got to do it. Most importantly, most importantly, five Democrat members of this committee voted to move forward with impeachment before the phone call ever happened. The truth is, the attacks actually started before, before the inauguration, even before the election. The ranking member talked about this. His opening statement, July 2016, FBI opens an investigation, so-called Trump-Russia coordination collusion, which was never there, opened an investigation, spied on two American citizens associated with the presidential campaign. My guess is that's probably never happened in American history, but they did it. And for 10 months, Jim Comey's FBI investigated the president. Guess what? After 10 months, they had nothing. And you know why we know that? Because when we deposed Mr. Comey last Congress, he told us they didn't have a thing. No matter, Special Counsel Mueller gets appointed, and they do a two-year, $40 million, 19-lawyer, unbelievable investigation. And guess what? They come back, and they got nothing. But the Democrats don't care. So now we get this. Bunch of depositions in the bunker in the basement of the Capitol, Witnesses who aren't allowed to answer questions about who they talked to about the phone call. We get this. All based on some anonymous whistleblower, no firsthand knowledge, bias against the president. These facts have never changed. We learned these right away. Who worked with Vice President Biden, who wrote a memo the day after somebody talked to him about the call, but waited 18 days to file a complaint. 18 days to file a complaint. What did he do in those 18 days? We all know. Ran off and talked with Chairman Schiff's staff. And then hired, hired the legal team that I just talked about, that I just talked about, one of the steps in the whole impeachment coup, as his legal team has said. This is scary what these guys are putting our country through. It is, it is, it is sad, it is scary, it is wrong. And the good news is the American people see through it all 
They know the facts are on the president's side. As Representative Stefanik said, four facts will never change. We got the transcript, which they never thought the president would release. Shows no coordination, no conditionality, no linkage. We got the two guys on the call, President Trump, President Zelensky, who have said nothing wrong, no pressure, no pushing here. We got the fact the Ukrainians didn't even know aid was held up at the time of the call. And most importantly, we have yet to have one witness tell us that the any, any evidence from anyone that, that President Zelensky did anything on investigations to get the aid released. Those facts will never change. The facts are on the president's side. The process is certainly not. It has been the most unfair process we have ever seen, and the American people understand it. Those 63 million Americans, they understand it. And frankly, I think a lot of others do as well. They see what this, is, this for what it is, and they know this is wrong, especially wrong, just 11 months before the next election. I yield back. Mr. Welch. Uh, thank you. What this hearing is about, I think, was best stated by Colonel Vindman 